Good morning. Morning. Thank you. So since I'm the only woman, I think I get 35 or 45 minutes, right? Even though all the women know we can do it in two minutes. So I'm going to talk to you about Chambers as an experience center. Chambers are going to be completely different in 2030 than they are today. And that's what we were asked to do, is what is a chamber going to look like in 2030? Uh-oh. All right. So some of the trends in a quick snapshot, you can read these. But being in San Francisco, I was surrounded by learning about molecular meats. Has anybody had the Impossible Burger? I personally felt like it was impossible to digest. But it was something that we had to try. They're taking DNA from chickens now, growing that in Petri dishes, and making chicken meat out of it. So that's one change you're going to see. Driverless cars by 2030 are supposed to have their own lanes. There are so many things that are going to change. Construction, 20% of buildings are going to be printed. I didn't believe this, but I was thinking, you know, they're printing houses now. They're printing legs. They're printing everything you can think of. So that's one of the big changes. Two billion jobs are supposed to be lost by 2030. So when you're thinking about this, you have to think, what is your value proposition? You'll need to really upskill your workforce. Some of the jobs that you're going to see that are going to go away are receptionists, couriers. And so companies built around this, like Postmates, you're going to see those dips appear and become obsolete. Taxi drivers, bus drivers, security guards, farmers, and accountants. So a lot of those things are going to be done by AI. AI will completely take over by 2030. Some of the non-replaceable jobs, for those of you that are probably excited, are the ones that actually you have to engage with people, surprisingly. Psychiatrists, which we could all use being in chamber work. Lawyers, social workers, HR, event planners, so give yourself a big hand. Some problem solvers, but you must be a problem solver and be on point to continue to work beyond 2030. So I would put together a think tank if I were your chamber and start working with a group of problem solvers. Ask yourself, do you have a team of solvers or do you have a team of problems? Put together what you think your chamber is going to look like. All right, this is a really great example. We already see that brick and mortar is completely disappearing. Now, how many of you shop online? Pretty much everyone. How many of you have been to an Amazon Go store? Yeah. yeah. You go in, get all your stuff, don't have to talk to anyone, already paid for it. And the best thing about this business plan as an experience is now there's empty storefronts, and guess what Amazon does? They go do pop-ups with four-star stores. So they've really thought about what the experiential thought to this is. I've watched Chambers grow for 20 years. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the transitioning of them. I know, Pam, I just saw you in the audience. When I started in Fort Collins, it's Pam's fault, we had a lobby, right? Everybody had a lobby. You walked in, you engage with people, you say, hey, how are you? What can I help you with, membership? In San Rafael, we had a lobby but we had information, we had packets, we had maps, we had all these things. In Irvine, we had a lobby, but we also had a building that provides experiences. Sandra was just telling me the other day they deliver gas now, but they have a game room, they did farmer's markets, they had food trucks, social events. In San Francisco, every building has an experience. We had gyms, we had touch screens, we had salons, we had pop-ups. Dave, this will be your favorite. We had a nap room. You could sign up for a 30-minute nap if you wanted. Airbnb's corporate headquarters has 32 drinks on tap every day, from kombucha to oat milk to wine and beer. So ask yourself, what experience are you going to provide for not only your employee, but your member. In Healdsburg, where I am now, I'm sure you're thinking, oh, those are bigger chambers. Well, in Healdsburg, what we have 
is a visitor center up front that's behind our chamber. And we're changing that into an experience center with pop-ups and unique attractions. I'm gonna move on to what your biggest competitor is right now. Who do you think your biggest competitor is? Other chambers? Other organizations? Nope, it's co-working spaces. We work all those places that offer hot desks, seminars, events, activities, things for the community. They're even starting to do advocacy programs out of these places. This is a picture of the brand new co-working space in Healdsburg. They have a membership, the networker membership. How many of you have had a networker membership in the past? They're taking over our own membership. It's $100. There's also the NRTR, Not Ready to Retire, which some of you have that as well. $80 for you to participate in this. So what we've done at Healdsburg is built a reciprocal membership. So what we do is provide a space in our experience center downtown that their people can go, but also our members can go to their workspace and utilize it for events and meetings. So again, as Josh talked about partnerships, talk about weaving those in. So this works in any size chamber, but I would question, you may have a level of membership in the future that is member experiences for people who only want to go and do activities and things. All right, so you're thinking, what experience can you provide? Here's a few examples. Now, just if you weren't paying attention, I put up my dog's Dolly Parton challenge. Um, the boomers may have to look up what that is. But Snickers has 3,000 followers, and he does get a lot of attention. The reason I bring that up is because a lot of people are doing experiences with their chambers where you're including family and pets. You're doing yappy hours. We had a sponsor in San Francisco of Hint Water. We had hint water at every meeting. We had it on every table. We had it at every event. We had it in bags. We gave it away. It's Nespresso. They put their machines up. They put their machines out and provided pods. So what type of people can you work with? Are you providing Wi-Fi? Do you have a lounge? What are your members going to be able to access? As I mentioned, we're changing our visitor center into an experience center. We're gonna have pop-ups, we're gonna do things for retail, we're gonna do things for restaurants and wineries. We're looking at doing the largest wine bottle in America. I know that seems silly, but how many of you wanted to see the largest rubber band ball? And for an example, an experience like this, the San Francisco Ice Cream Museum, a place to take selfies and do Insta stories, sold out in 18 minutes, sold out. Had half a million visitors in 2017 alone. So ask yourself, if plastic sprinkles in a tub can generate $20 million in revenue, what is your chamber gonna provide as an experience? Your value proposition will be far less important than the experience that you're providing. I give this example of the trolley car because when they started, there was over 600. There's less than 40 now, and very few actually run on any kind of specific route. And you know what's sad? People don't want to pay $7 for this emblematic symbol of the city in riding an iconic piece of transportation. But you know what they did pay for? $38 to take a picture on an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Finally, you guys are laughing. All right, now that you're laughing, in closing, how will you adapt? What experience will your chamber provide? What's important to the experiences within your community? Are you going to be a Disneyland of chambers? Change is the only thing constant, and we used to say, this isn't our grandfather's chamber. Well, in 2030, you're gonna be saying, this is not our daughter's or son's chamber either. iPads, technology, iWatches, ear pods, all of that is gonna be completely obsolete. So what will you provide to your membership and what experience will you give? 
In closing, I just want to say the only a visionary is a realist, and I challenge each of you to put together that think tank and come up with your experiential chamber. Thank you.